Welcome to Pictionary Concept Video. We're going to go over the L goal paradox. Here we're looking at a snapshot in time of an animation of an L goal system. On the left, we have a blue mean sequence star. And in blue lettering, I'm going to label it M sub S. I'm also going to call it M sub 2, indicating that it's the secondary star. Now this particular secondary star has a mass of 3.7 solar masses. So I will write in blue lettering 3.7 M sub sun. Now this main sequence star is in a close binary with a subgiant. And the subgiant's color is orange. So I'm going to label it S sub G in orange lettering. I'm also going to call it M sub 1, indicating it's the primary star. And its mass is 0.8 solar masses, which I'm going to write in orange lettering to remind us that this subgiant has a mass of 0.8 solar masses. Now, these two stars in a close binary were thought to have been born at the same time. And this L goal system has one main sequence star that is more massive than the evolved less massive star or the subgiant. From stellar evolution, we know that the more massive star should have evolved sooner than the less massive star. However, in this case, we have the less massive star that has evolved sooner than the more massive star. This is a paradox. How can this be? So in order to resolve it, either we don't understand evolution or something must be going on in this particular algal system. We think it's the latter. Something's going on with this system. How can we end up with a situation where the less massive star is the evolved star? Let's take a look at how we may have come about with this algal system. We start out with a detached binary where the more massive star is on the less and the less massive star is on the right. So I will label them M sub one and M sub two. The dash line is the center of mass, so the system is going to orbit around the center of mass. Now with the orange or red star on the left being the more massive star, it's gonna evolve sooner than M sub two. So the evolve will take place and the star or M sub one on the left will fill its Roche lobe and we will end up with a semi-detached close binary. It will transfer its mass to the unseen star secondary. The reason why it's unseen is because the mass is gonna come in and it's gonna slowly spiral around, filling up the accretion disk until it eventually lands on the secondary star. Eventually enough mass will be transferred from M1 to M2 to end up with a case where M1 becomes less massive than M2. And when that happens, we have what's called an L goal system. The left is how we find L goal systems. We see two stars that are in a close binary in the sky. Notice we don't generally see an accretion disk. We just see we find two stars. Either accretion has turned off completely or it is weak. What we find is we have a one star that has evolved. So we're just labeling it M sub one. It's an evolved star. And since it's evolved, it's usually a subgiant, which I'll label S sub G, but it could also be a giant star or a G. I'm just gonna label it S sub G to remind us that it's an evolved star. The other one, it's lost its accretion disk. So accretion is weak or turned off. We can actually see the star and I'm gonna label it M sub two. It's usually blue white and it is a main sequence star. Now the paradox comes in because M1, our evolved star is less massive than M2, our main sequence star. Now how can that be? Because we know from science that the more massive star has to be the evolved star. 
but in this case, our more massive star is a main sequence star. Our less massive star is the evolved star. Our more massive star is the blue-white main sequence star, which I have labeled M sub 2. The reason why it's labeled M sub 2, because when accretion finally starts again, we're going to see mass transfer from M sub 2 go to M sub 1, forming an accretion disk around M sub 1, falling onto M sub 1. By this time, when accretion turns back on, this subgiant will have evolved off the main sequence and will become a white dwarf. So right now, in this algal system, we find a main sequence star that is more massive than its companion star, which is an evolved star. And the paradox comes in because the evolved star should be the more massive object, but it isn't when we see it at this time in this binary star evolution.